Welcome back. In this video, we will see how to assign a nullable value to a non-nullable variable by using the assertion operator or the exclamation mark. So you'll see in one of my previous videos, uh, I've talked about the exclamation mark that you should use with the stdin read line sync. And uh, I will explain this now. And then also we will look at the if null operator or the double question mark. Right, so let's have a quick look at an example. Let's say that we have an age of, let's say, 60. And we declare a double price. So this, this person will go to a specific mall or a shopping center or whatever. And let's say he's got a thousand five hundred rand that he spent. But because he's older than 60, we want to give him some discount. So I'm going to say int discount. And I'm not going to give it a value, but I'm going to have this as nullable, which means it can contain the null value. Then I'm going to test if the age is greater than 60 or equal to 60, we will give him discount. So then we will say discount should be, let's say, uh, let's say you give him 20, 20 rands off. Discount equals 20. Is it discount? So let's say then discount will be 20 if the age is greater than 60. And you can see there's absolutely no problem here. Now let's go and say the double final price would be the price that we have at the top plus the disc minus the discount. Now you can see that we've got a problem here. It's got a problem with discount and it says the argument of type int with a question mark, which means the nullable type, can't be assigned to the parameter of type num, which is non-nullable. So what we're trying to do is to assign a nullable value, this discount, because we declared it as nullable, to a non-nullable variable. So final price, you can see as a normal double, it's not nullable. So what we're actually saying is that this value could be null, and by taking the price minus this null value will give me problems. And the compiler picks that up for you. And that's part of null safety, which means that I need to do some change here in order to make this work. So one change we can do is to use the exclamation mark there or the assertion operator. And basically what it's doing, it's telling Dart, you know what, I know what I'm doing. I want to use this value in this calculation even though it is declared as nullable, I know it will never be null. And because of that, I will force this value or this specific line to be calculated using this value. So by just adding your exclamation mark there or your assertion operator, you're forcing the dot language to not give you that error and continue with the rest. So now if we say print final price, and we run it, you will see absolutely no problem. We've got 1,500 Rand for the price. If the age is more than 60, we get a discount of 20 and we deduct the discount. No problem at all. But what if this is 50 and I run it now? Now, in this if statement, it's not greater than or equal 60. So discount will never get a value, which means the value for discount is currently null. Now, for me to try and subtract null which is basically nothing, it's not zero, it's nothing, it's no value, from something that's got a value will not work. And this is the error. Null has no properties error, null has no properties. Not a very descriptive error. And that is why if you use the exclamation mark, you must know that you're actually doing the right thing here, and you're testing for the null values. Whereas if discount did not have a value there, let's leave out the exclamation mark you would see because discount is also not set it will also give you a problem here and it will tell you that the variable discount must be assigned before it can be used so there you've assigned it so the else part you could have added an else part here that will set your discount to zero else and then it will have no problem at all so it depends on how you declared it so if I leave out this else statement, it means that that value could be null. And because of that, we will need to either add the else there or make this nullable and then force it to be calculated there by using the assertion. 
So the better route here would have been to add that extra else statement and give the discount an actual value. But if you are sure that your value that gets returned or in the specific calculation will not be null, then you may use your assertion operator. And now you'll see in the previous videos where we did stdin.readline sync um, in VS Code, we are just testing. So that value that gets back from the console could contain a null value. And if you use a proper if statement, you can catch that value and you will never get a null value there as well. But for our demonstration purposes, we also then had to use this exclamation mark. Right, so uh, that's the assertion operator. So basically forcing a value to be calculated even though it could contain a null value. Now let's have a quick look at the if null operator. And the if null operator could have actually helped us here. So before this, we could have said something like, uh, let's say discount equals discount and then I'm going to use the ternary operator to say well if the value is null then give me a value of zero else just keep the value of discount so now what I'm doing is I'm giving discount a new value if the discount and that's the ternary operator if the discount is currently null which means the age is not greater than 60 I will assign a zero else I will just keep discount as it is, which means it will probably be 20 then. And now you can see it gives us a problem here with this, or just a warning, that the exclamation mark or the assertion operator will have no effect because the receiver can't be null. So you can actually take it away because now it cannot be null because I'm either assigning zero or the discount value of 20. So if I run this now with an age of 50, we will get a discount of zero, which means the price will stay 1,500. So this is the normal ternary operator to, to help us in this case. And that would have worked also, the else statement would have worked or would have done the exact same thing. But now let's look at the if null operator, which is a bit different than this one, but a lot easier to do. So basically to get exactly the same output, I will replace this with a double question mark and then just put a zero there which means that if I run this now, you'll see nothing has changed. It's still the same. So basically what it's doing, it's saying, I'm going to give discount the value of discount. But if the value is null, if discount is currently null, I'm going to give it the value of zero. So on the right hand side of the question marks will only be assigned if this value is in fact null then it's going to replace it with a zero. And this we call the if null operator. So if discount is null, uh, then we assign the value of zero to discount. Otherwise, it will just have the previous value of discount, which will be 20. Hope you've learned something in this video. See you in the next one.